Alright guys, so things are getting out of hand. The Middle East just erupted again, Ukraine has done the unthinkable, and the EU is getting desperate. Now I'm breaking updates for you. The reprieve that we had over the week is over and chaos is back. I know it's doom and gloom all over again, but we must talk about this. Geopolitical risks have been ramped up again and we have gold. The ultimate barometer of chaos hit a record high. Fiat currencies are getting hammered. And this is a reminder that we are losing buying power day after day. And the first tragedy is, of course, the Middle East getting plunged back into chaos. And to no one's surprise, Anthony Blinken is blaming Hamas for a breakdown of the truce, saying that they fired missiles and U-turned on a hostage release. Now this is one gigantic mess and what's horrifying is the discussions about Gaza after the conflict ends. I mean, at this rate, it'll be reduced to rubble. And I think the message from Israel is abundantly clear. They are not going to stop until they reach these three goals. And let me spell it out. Releasing the hostages, eliminating Hamas, and ensuring that Gaza never again constitutes a threat to the residents of Israel. Focus on the part about eliminating Hamas. That's going to take months or even years and every day this drags on, you have Iran on the edge of taking action as well. Now things are also ramping up in Iran as well guys. This breaking news threatens to light a fire and push Raisi to do something. The House has passed legislation to block Iran from accessing $6 billion from the Biden administration. According to one member of Congress, this is a moment of moral clarity and Iran is the head of the snake. Just talk about financial escalations, right? First, you're going after their oil industry and then now you want to choke more money away. This is just poking the Iranian bear even further. And if you need even more evidence that things are getting out of hand, here's more chaos happening in the region. Saudi Arabia just confirmed an Israeli strike on the Houthis in Yemen. That's down south, just behind the borders of the kingdom. And this might be in retaliation to all the drone strikes and hijacking of an Israeli ship a week earlier. But this just confirms the conflict is spreading far beyond Syria and even Iraq. And this is finally sparking fears of apocalypse, right? A literal Armageddon if escalations continue to get worse. From Bloomberg, fears of World War III prey on hedge fund titans and policymakers alike. Well, I mean, what do you expect, right? Why do you think the price of gold is well over $2,000 today? It's because things are really out of control. The elites, they are having flashbacks to the previous world wars and how interconnected conflicts can spill over into global chaos. Can this be any more obvious? Just look at the economic impact of war casualties. The impact of the Ukraine and Israel war has topped $2.4 billion in just two years. It will easily exceed the cost of the Vietnam War or even the Iraq-Iran War. Now, I hate how they reduce human lives to just mere numbers, but I suspect that this number to be heavily understated. We haven't even counted in any infrastructure damage yet, and that number is going to skyrocket. And if we focus on the insanity in Europe, the eastern theatre of the war, Ukraine just took things to a next level, to another level. In a crazy update, reports state that Ukraine has blown up two railway connections between Russia and China. Yes, this means the Ukrainian forces went all the way deep into Russia in a place called Ber Beryashia or something, 6,000 kilometers east of Ukraine. They went in and they set off explosions in a connection tunnel. Now, the region is bordering north of Mongolia and just above China. And this strike is alarming not just because it's deep within Russia, but now infrastructure is the prime target. I don't think this really changes things in a big way, right? There are many other major railways and all the shipping lanes where goods can flow to and from Russia. So this attack virtually changes nothing, but it will infuriate both China and Russia. The real networks are located all the way in the Far East. Russia and China, they have multiple bridges connecting each other, especially alongside the Amu River. The real railway and port networks are located all the way to the east. One such example is the Tongjiang Bridge connecting both countries together. Now, if that is taken out, then you might just drag China into the conflict. So trade disruption is non-existent here. But what this does will be to make Russia and China more united than ever. We have to understand that trade between China and Russia won't end. They are now functioning as one economic unit. We have to understand this. The West has literally lumped them into one boat with Mitch McConnell, calling them the members of the axis of evil. Listen to this next phrase. We need to stand up to the axis of evil, not try to do business with them. So if you're China and you're Russia and you listen to this, you kind of know that you're on your own. 
behind the curtain of the Biden Xi meeting, the underlying sentiment in Washington is still very much against China and Russia. And when you frame things in a good versus evil light, it's basically an existential battle of right versus wrong. And let me make a 1000 IQ prediction here. Trade between Russia and China won't stop. It will only grow. And my crystal ball is also telling me that they will use fewer dollars and more local currencies for bilateral trade as well. In Q3 this year, China's exports to Russia have surged to the moon. Chinese companies have exported nearly $10 billion every month to Moscow and the trajectory is heading higher and higher. Because the West pulled out from the country, the entire market in Russia is kind of free game for Beijing now. But listen to this next fact. According to official data, 75% of Russia's trade with China is now being settled in the Chinese Yuan. The remainder could be the ruble. And this is huge because it sanction proofs China even further from all the currency curbs. Even if the United States cuts China away from SWIFT one day, it won't really affect trade done in their local currency. The more China trades with Russia and other countries outside of the euro and the dollar, the better they can sanction proof themselves. And speaking of financial sanctions, it's becoming more and more apparent to the global south to diversify their reserve holdings. Holding only dollar bonds or euro denominated assets is crazy because of counterparty risk. Your money might be safe today, but if sanctions are slapped on you, it could be at risk tomorrow. Even Switzerland, which built its economy on handling private wealth, is starting to choose sides. In a sudden update, the Swiss has revealed the amount of frozen Russian assets. From Reuters, the Swiss have frozen $8.8 billion worth of Russian assets. This is a slight increase from the figure last year, meaning they have ramped up the financial sanctions. Now that's just wealth from Russian individuals and companies. The Swiss has also blocked over $8 billion in Russian central bank assets as well. Just a week ago, the Swiss president met with Zelensky to discuss using the frozen Russian assets. And I think there's a very good chance that if push comes to show, if they are pressured enough, the Swiss could very well transfer the assets to Ukraine. According to reports, they are part of the discussions but are still on the fence about whether to support the EU on this. If that happens, then Swiss neutrality could be broken forever. I think that is the Rubicon, the thin red line, the point of no return. Just imagine what will happen to the Swiss banking system if it happens. The Credit Suisse collapse won't be the last one. All the Chinese, they'll put their money away because they know if things get dicey enough, if things get worse with the United States, they may be next. And you'll see a big exodus of money out of the West just heading back home. What's the point of buying Western assets if money isn't sacrosanct? Money printing is bad enough, but if you throw in extreme counterparty risk, it is as good as toxic waste. Now, I know this might be a remote possibility, but the West is getting desperate to clamp down on Russia. And this next report tells us that they are running out of tricks. Apparently, the EU is going to tell President Xi to enforce the sanctions on Russia. And if he doesn't, then they are going to name and shame the companies involved. Look, I don't think China is going to enforce Western sanctions on Russia because they know they are nicks on a chopping block. Crippling Russia is as good as crippling your close ally. Why would Beijing ever want to do that? And that's why this entire economic war is getting ridiculous. China, they'll do a song and dance for the EU, but nothing's going to change. I think we have truly reached peak sanctions and it's going to be a continuation of the regime. We aren't going back to normal anymore. The Kremlin is working on the assumption that Western sanctions will last for many more years. They are gearing up for a long economic war. And this means we'll be living in a highly inflationary world more than the usual BS. The United States has also pledged to half Russia's energy revenues by 2030. And this is confirmation from Washington that tells us that this will drag on and on and on. The West will forever cut themselves away from cheap Russian energy and the level of trust will stay at negative levels. And if there's any beneficiary of this chaos, it will be gold. Now this breakdown in trust is a tailwind for gold prices because you have the ultimate combination for years to come. If you didn't know yet, gold prices have rallied to an all-time high on bets that the Federal Reserve will start cutting rates very soon. Prices were 3.4% higher this week and they rose to 20.75 per ounce to beat the previous high back in 2020. This is phenomenal and if you are consistently buying gold, I think this is a big milestone to celebrate. And you have to ask yourself, why is the price of gold going up? And it's back to the fundamentals of money itself. It's not that gold is rising, it's that fiat currencies are dying. The value of the dollar, the yuan and the euro, everything is cratering to hell. 
Around two months ago, I made a video when gold crashed down to $1,800. I said that the price collapse was good and that it was a buying opportunity, at least for me. This was back on October the 3rd, a few days before the Israel-Hamas war broke out. Even back then, the fundamentals for gold were good and now it's even stronger in the years to come. Now, this isn't a video asking you to buy gold. You can do what you want to do. But here's why I'll continue to stack more over time. Firstly, the US national debt is out of control because of all the war spending and all the social programs. Congress has to keep borrowing money. And the rates are no longer 0 to 1%. We are talking about a bare minimum of 4 to 5% on US treasuries. Just next year alone, we will have $7.6 trillion about to mature. That's 30% of outstanding debt that will be rolled over to higher interest rates. Just a 2% increase in rates will mean an additional $150 billion in interest payments alone. And I'm being very conservative here. Where will the money come from, guys? You have to be borrowed into existence once again. At the US Treasury, they probably have a big plaque with the words in big and bold letters. Borrow for Peter to pay Paul. And that's the grand strategy Janet Yellen has. But eventually, it will fail. And then the US government will default by printing money through the Federal Reserve. It might not happen this year or next year, but it's going to come sooner or later. And that's just the national debt crisis, right? The global breakdown in trust is going to force global central banks into gold as well. In this chart, we can see who's been buying more and more gold. In Q3 this year and last year, central banks have been scrambling to buy more and more gold for their reserves. Why are the masters of the universe buying gold? Maybe it's because they know the jig is up. Yes, China is buying gold to de-dollarize, that's ultra obvious, any monkey knows that by now. But we have Singapore, the Middle East and even Poland buying gold as well. They know the value of fiat is going to crash to hell, I can't explain it any simpler. The entire system is built on expanding credit and gold is the only asset that you can't print from thin air. And if you throw in all the chaos we mentioned earlier, the demand for gold won't stop. Just look at gold price in Japanese yen. It looks like runaway inflation. It looks like Argentina. And this is what happens when you suppress your interest rates and you destroy the value of your currency. The price of real wealth starts to skyrocket. So if you're a saver in Japan, there's really nowhere else to run. The stock market is far from stable and not everyone can afford to buy a house outright. So this situation is playing out in other emerging market economies as well. The Federal Reserve has come out saying that more rate cuts are still off the table and more rate hikes might be coming if necessary. Now, that is for sure bearish on all other assets, including gold. But you need to see high interest rates as a trampoline for higher gold prices. The more bonds are issued at high interest rates, that means more borrowing will come to pay off this additional part of interest. The water behind the dam is building. The money supply is slowly growing in the system because of higher interest rates. We just aren't seeing it in real time yet. But once the Federal Reserve, they start cutting interest rates or they start printing money, then we'll see this huge deluge of money just flood the markets. And I bet a huge amount of it will flow into gold. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy gold today. It's your money. But personally, I won't stop because we are really living in a clown economy. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Will things continue to escalate in the Middle East? And more importantly, will gold continue to rise in the years to come? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.